So now we have to see what is the edible portion. So now we have to discuss that in which of the following plants the edible portion is placenta and pericarp. Now in apple the part which is edible that is thalamus yes in the fruit the part which is edible that is thalamus banana the part which is edible that is mesocarp and endocarp so you know that in the banana there is presence of skin Yes, the skin which is formed that is formed by fusion of thalamus and apica. Fine. Now, below the apica, the part which is edible present, the edible part which is present, that is mesocarp, and on the inner side the edible part which is present that is endocarp and in the endocarp you will see the minute structures yes these minute structures which are present they represent unfertilized ovule right so the part which is edible here that is mesocarp and endocarp now coming to tomato now, I am showing you the longitudinal section of fruit of tomato. Yes, this is LS. Yes, the part which I am showing here that is representing seeds. Fine. Now, in the tomato, this is skin representing apicarp. This one, it is representing mesocarp. Then it is endocarp. Yes. Epicarp, mesocarp, endocarp, three of them together represent fruit wall and this fruit wall you call it as pericarp. Now the innermost part which is present here, yes this part, this is representing placenta. Now except the seeds, all the parts which are present in the tomato fruit, they are edible. So which parts they are edible? That is fruit wall, pericarp and placenta. Now coming to the last option that is potato. Now the potato, the part which is edible, that is underground stem which is known as tuber. So amongst the four options, the one which is right for this question, that is tomato here. So now let's proceed towards the next question, question number 98. Now question number 98, when the margins of petals or sepals overlap one another without any particular direction, the condition is termed as. Now this type of condition is seen in imbricate estivation. There is irregular overlapping of petals. So I will make one diagram here to make it clear.
Yes, so this is posterior side, this is anterior size and here I am showing five petal hairs. So you can see the posterior petal, it is overlapped by two lateral petals. Now these lateral petals, they are in turn overlapped by two anterior petals. So now what is the condition? Irregular overlapping is there. Such type of estivation, you call it as imbricate type. It is seen in Casia and Gulmohar. So now let's talk about, so now let's discuss next question. That is question number 99 here. Question number 99, you are given a fairly old piece of dicot stem and a root, which of the following anatomical feature will, use, will you use to distinguish between the two? Now, stem and root, one major difference which is present, that is with respect to the position of proto and metaxylem, right? In the stem, the condition which is present that is known as endoc, yes, endoc xylem is there, and in root there is presence of exoc xylem. Endoc and exoc xylem. This is with respect to the position of protoxylem and metaxylem. So now let's see what is the scenario in endoc condition. Now, in the end of condition, protoxylum elements, yes, these small size elements, these the elements which are formed first, they are the protoxylum elements, they are present towards the inner side and these large size elements which are formed laterally, they are metaxylum and they are present on outer side. So, protoxylum on the inner side, metaxylum towards outer side, you call this condition as end arc present in both dicot as well as monocot stem. In the root condition is just reverse. So, now here protoxylum elements, they are towards outer side and metaxylum elements they are present towards inner side. So this condition when the protoxylum is present towards outer side, you call it as exact type of xylem. So amongst these four, now the one which will help us in distinguishing the old dicot stem and dicot root, that is the protoxylum. So the right answer for the question number 99 is option number 3. So let's proceed towards question number 100 here. Which of the following is correct? The first option is the seed in grasses is non-endospermic. Yes, grasses they represent monocots and in the monocots there is presence of endospermic seed. So this is incorrect here. Mango is a parthenocarpic fruit. Parthenocarpic fruit is one which is formed without fertilization. And mango is a fruit which is formed with fertilization. So it is a true fruit. Now third one, a proteinaceous aluron layer is present in maize grain. Yes. So let's say this is fruit of maize. The fruit of maize it is known as caryopsis. It is also known as grain. Right? In the fruit there is presence of large size seed. One single seed is present in the fruit and the major part of the seed it is occupied by the endosperm. Yes? So in the seed this major part it is occupied by nutritive tissue that is endosperm. The outermost layer of endosperm, it is very special. Yes, this outermost layer, 
it is very special because it is proteinaceous and this proteinaceous layer you call it as aluron layer fine aluron layer is present in maize it is present in barley but you have to keep this in mind that in rice and wheat this proteinaceous layer in the grain is absent now coming to the last option a sterile pestle is called staminode no a sterile pestle is called pistilode and a sterile stamen is known as staminode so amongst all these the correct option here is option number 3 so now let's proceed towards the question number 101